Welcome back to another conflict video and in this video I'm going to show you how to create my really simple third person car controller for 3D Construct. Start off with I've created a really small world that's got a sprite for a football pitch and I've created these 3D walls. A link will be in the description if you want to follow along at this stage of the tutorial. This is just decorative, let's get started with actually introducing the car. Start by creating a 3D object. Click anywhere and this is where you get to design what your car looks like. Now you can resize some of these faces to be slightly bigger or smaller, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna use the car that's available in the Ghost Races tutorial, because I think that car looks really, really good. And one sheet of car later, I've got my design. And again, you can make your own, or there's plenty of different ones that you can find. Just remember that the back is going to be the bottom of the car, front is the top, and then left and right is going to be the back and the front and then your two sides. Once you're done, hit exit and you'll see I've got my little tiny car on the screen here. I can resize up a little bit if I want. Now when it comes to working in 3D, what's the most important thing to do at the moment is click anywhere and go to your project properties and make sure you're working on the z-axis being regular and not normalized. By default it's normalized and it means it's scaling by I think 1.4, 1.5 on all the numbers that you enter it back to regular means that your 3D camera sizes and 3D objects work the same as your normal pixel scales. So something that is vital to put on. There's also a field of view scaler, which we won't be touching in this one, but if you want to make it so the 3D camera has got a wider field of view or a smaller field of view, you can change that here as well. So now we've got the car in place, we can now start adding our third person camera. Now to do this, we're not actually going to place the camera on our car, we're going to create another object for it to go on. So I'm going to insert a new sprite. And this is going to be my third person camera. And for this, I just normally fill this in with a single block color and hit escape, because it's going to be invisible when we play. Shrink this right down, and I'm going to place it behind the car. The further you place this behind the car, the further back it will be from the car itself. And the only thing we need to do with this is make sure it's invisible. Now we're ready to start adding our behaviors. And we only need two behaviors today. We'll start with our third person camera. We're just gonna edit behaviors and add the pin behavior. So we're gonna scroll down and add pin. For our car, we need the car behavior. So we're gonna add that behavior and add the car behavior. And then while I'm here, I'm just gonna add the solid behavior to my walls because yes, the solid behavior will work in this. We don't need to set up anything complicated to get this working inside the 3D environment like we would do with our first person controller. Now those behaviors are in, the only thing left that we need to do on this page is insert a new object and add in our 3D camera. Now moving to the event sheet, we actually need only two events to get this working. So let's get started. First event we're going to do is a system and on start of layout. Then gonna add an action and go to our 3D camera. I'm going to start by looking parallel to layout. This puts it in that 3D perspective and we'll be looking behind the car. So for the camera X, we're not using the car, we're going to be using the third person camera dot X and the third person camera dot Y. For the camera Z, you pick the height that you want the camera to be. I'm going to go for 60, but we can adjust these. And the look angle is going to be the car body dot angle. So that's the first bit done, that sets up our camera to be in the right position. But if the car moves, this will break straight away. So we're just going to set up a new action. This is going to be a system, and it's going to be every tick. We're going to take our 3D camera once more. We're going to use this look at position. Now this takes in quite a lot of properties, but don't be too scared. We're going to start with where our camera is going to be. In this case, we're looking at the third person cameras dot X and third person camera dot Y. So our camera's start position. The height of this camera is going to be 60, but again, you can adjust this. The higher you adjust this, the higher up the camera is, giving you a much more different perspective. And then we choose what we want our camera to look at. And um, we want our camera to look at our car body, dot x, car body, dot y. And then again, you choose the second angle. I'm going to put this around about 15. So it's going to be between those two points on how it looks. We can adjust those later and give us a different perspective. Next, we decide what is up. Now, Y is no longer our up direction, which is a default construct. We want Z to be the up direction. Now, at this stage, we can actually start testing this. I'm going to show you what it looks like first, but we haven't pinned our third-person camera yet. So at the moment, we've got a static camera. 
which gives us a really interesting look actually because it will follow the player around so you can get a really unique sort of dynamic camera using this obviously we want to follow behind the car so let's do that as well so last thing we need to do is on started layout we're just going to add an action and we're just going to take our third person camera scroll down and pin to objects and we'll pin to our common body this time as the car moves the camera will move with it so we get our new look looks a little bit like this and we can move around the screen now you see there's a little bit of jumpiness that's happening as well easiest fix for this is just go into your event sheets and add in an additional action on start of layout scroll down and we'll go right to the bottom I'm going to set the minimum frame rate to 120. What's happening is we're getting a very, very small amount of lag and the game's freaking out about it. What this code will do instead is make it so the game always runs at 120 and it will slow down the game slightly if it needs to. Now, when it slows it down, it's actually really unnoticeable unless you're using lots and lots of 3D objects. So we get something that's a little bit more smoother. Now, I'm going to show you two changes that you can make to this tutorial to take it a little bit further. First one is going to be adding separate keyboard control so you can use W, A, C, and D instead of the arrow keys. So to do this, we're just going to right click and add a new object, scroll down to our keyboard, and just add it like so. I'm going to add a new event, and this is going to be a keyboard event, and we're going to check if a key is down. We'll start by using the W key, which is our accelerate, and again, you can change this to be whatever you want. Add action, car body, scroll down, simulate control, and we've got our four options here. I'm going to use accelerate, and then we're just going to copy and paste this four times, and then just change the keys that we need to change. So I can now change this to A, and I can use this to turn left. I can then use D to turn right, and we can use obviously S to go backwards. This just means now we control the car using W, S, and D, and we can click on our car body at the side, and just turn off default controls, which means we can no longer use the arrow keys. So that's just personal preference there. And you can even use a gamepad to do the same sort of thing. So final change that we can make is making our car more interesting. And there's a couple of ways that we can do this, but we can actually combine different 3D shapes together. So first thing I've got actually is not a 3D shape, but a sprite. And this is just a simple wheel that I've created. And I gave it just a really, really short animation of just the wheel spinning. We cannot rotate objects in a 3D space. We can only rotate on the 2D plane, not in the Z axis yet. So this is the way that we can create rotations like that. As for the car itself, we've got a couple of changes. So if I zoom in on the car, I've actually added a couple of different things to it. So the first thing that we've got is we've got an aerial. So this is just a 3D shape I've created, nothing crazy or immensive, but the cars have got an aero that can sit on top. And all I've done is made it so the Z elevation, the starting Z axis position is higher. I've raised my car off the ground slightly as well using the same logic and I've added these wheels at the side. Now you'll notice that my other wheel that I showed you was flat. In order to get a wheel like this to appear on the screen, what we need to do is create a 3D object and what I'm doing is changing its default faces. So if I was to change this and clear selection, you'll see that I've got this black box that I created originally and I can change the faces individually and they'll keep the animations from the sprite I'm taking it from. You can then also hide the other faces if you don't want them. So it's a really, really simple way that you can take a 2D sprite and put it into 3D. Final thing you might have noticed is these weird arrows coming off, these weird arrows coming off, and this basically says that this is a pinned combined shape, but I want to use the pin behavior because that gets a bit tricky to use and creates a lot of code that's unnecessary. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all these shapes as I'm just going to remove all children. Once you've got your shapes in the right place that you want, we're going to select all of our shapes by just highlighting over. And what's really important is your main body has to be the last thing you select. Now the easiest way to do this is hold control on your keyboard, select your body to unselect it, and then press it again to reselect it. We're then gonna right click, and then we're gonna use this hierarchy add selection to instances. And this means now everything is attached to our body. And see if I move my body, these arrows appear to show me that. And most importantly, if we hit play, all these objects will stick to our main car as we move around the level. Again, I'm 
by no means an artist by any means, so I'm sure you can do something far more clever by combining these objects together. And I'll show you an example of where someone's made a tank using this, which is on the example page of Constructs as well. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I make loads of Construct videos, especially ones around 3D, if you're learning 3D Construct. And I'll see you in the next one.